two weeks in Bangkok, we traveled by train and bus through Northeast Thailand, a region known as Isan. Our first stop was Nakhon Ratchasima, departing from Bangkok's Bangsu Rail Station. Opened in 2021, the new station is a beautiful, shiny, modern terminal. However, our train left from the station that was built for Thailand's very first railway line in 1898. The train itself was old but serviceable, and the windows were filthy. But soon the city gave way to countryside. Rice paddies were plentiful, as Thailand is the world's second largest rice exporter after India. There were also some industrial plants along the way. Rising into the Khao Yai Mountains, we passed by a striking Buddha perched on a nearby peak. Coming out of the mountains, into the Isan region on the Korat Plateau, finishing four hours of total journey we arrived in Nakhon Ratchasima, also known as Korat. We hopped on a tuk-tuk at the train station, a tight squeeze with all of our luggage. The third largest city in Thailand and the largest in Isan, Korat is still tiny compared to Bangkok. Our hotel was beautifully appointed with all teak wood decor and furniture. And the nearby night market was small, but worth checking out. The region of Isan, the largest in Thailand, is bordered by Laos to the north and west and Cambodia to the south. For about 500 years, it was part of the Cambodian Khmer Empire. About an hour's drive from Korat, Pimai was one of the most important Khmer towns and temples. Built in the 11th and 12th centuries CE, it was modeled after the Khmer capital of Angkor to the southeast. And during its peak in the 13th century, Pimai was about the same size as the more famous Angkor. The entrance to the temple marks one end of the ancient Khmer Highway that ran 225 kilometers to Angkor. Lion dogs guard the front entrance, and Nagas, Hindu Buddhist snake spirits, guard all the access points, their serpent bodies forming the railings. Walking straight through the concentric rectangular peripheral walls, all made of massive sandstone blocks. You reach the inner sanctuary. There were three towers, or prang. The main one richly ornamented with Buddhist symbols. Including numerous Naga guardians. At least one pigeon. At the center of the main prong, the Buddha sits in meditation, shrouded by a Naga, protecting him and by extension the surrounding temple and city. As we left the temple, we noticed a halo circling the sun, accentuating the special nature of ancient Phimai. Five minutes drive from the temple complex, Sai Ngam has a beautiful pagoda in the center of a lake. But the main attraction is a copse of banyan trees. Unfortunately, they were all flooded out by recent unusually heavy rains. So instead of walking under the canopy of the banyans, we could only look disappointed from the outside. The Korat bus station close to our hotel was basic but pretty nice. We needed some help buying the tickets 
and they're only sold on the day of departure. But we found our destination and our bay. Our driver was very proud of his rig. The seats were a bit more comfortable than our previous train. And soon we were off, rolling along Highway 2, the main road heading northeast towards Laos. As the Khmer Empire declined from the 13th to 17th centuries, most of Isan came under the Lao Kingdom of Lansang. Even today, locals speak a Lao dialect in addition to Thai. Konken is another of the major Isan towns on the Korat Plateau. A university town, there are plenty of services including very affordable, full-service laundromats. There are several bus stops, though we never actually saw a bus, and the city seemed built for cars. But the central part of town is walkable, with a couple of nice lakeside parks. Unfortunately, one of them was heavily flooded by the recent hard rains that had come through Isan and central Thailand. We chose Kong Ken to break the journey north to Laos, and also because a good friend lives there. He runs a farm outside of town and gave us a tour. He raises cattle and some very curious goats. who are happy to let us feed them. For the next leg of our trip, we left from the Kongken Rail Station, an elevated station built in 2019. Tickets are sold the day of departure, and there are several trains to choose from to go to Nong Kai the border town with Laos. But that's a story for the next vlog. We flew from Laos back through Bangkok to Chiang Mai in the far north of Thailand. Our taxi from the airport took a convoluted route through the old city to our hotel. The old city was built in the late 13th century with defensive walls and a moat, which have created some unusual modern traffic patterns. We stayed just outside of Old Town, in a walkable neighborhood, and in just a few minutes, we could be inside the walls. Chiang Mai is known for its many night markets. Some are every night, and some only weekly. They pop up inside temples, on the sides of streets, or taking up entire stretches of streets. A wide array of goods are available. And walking is the preferred way to get in and out as traffic gets really clogged. Though when you do want to get around without walking, Songtao minibuses are common, especially in popular tourist spots. Outside of rush hour, we didn't find them to be crowded. For short rides, they're a fixed rate per person, though the farther you go, the more negotiation is involved. Pedicabs are much less common. Chiang Mai is also known for its Buddhist temples, or Wats, with more than a hundred in the greater city region. Notable Wats that we visited include Wat Kao, or Wat Fan Tao, with a 19th century main building constructed entirely of teak wood. The monks there were busy working. Interestingly, 
The temple windows were the same design that we saw in the 11th century Femai temple complex. Wat Chedi Luang is one of the largest in the city, comprising what used to be three temples. The city pillar is also here, a shrine believed to protect the city. Shoes and women are forbidden inside, and women for a very old school reason. But the interior is beautiful and really should be appreciated by everyone. The largest structure, the Royal Stupa, was started in the 14th century and held the Emerald Buddha for almost 100 years until an earthquake collapsed the top of the structure and the Buddha was moved to Luang Prabang, Laos, before then being taken to its current home in Bangkok. 15 kilometers west of and 700 meters above Chiang Mai, access to the city's most famous wat is guarded by twin nagas, their serpentine bodies framing the 309 steps to the top. Or you can take a tram. The first stupa of Wat Phratat Doi Sutep was built in 1383, but the access road wasn't laid until 1935 and the tram added in the 1980s. With modern access and tourism facilities, over 100,000 visitors ascend the hill every month. The temple complex is built into the forested hillside, and the eastern viewing platform provides a spectacular panoramic of the city. Under five kilometers outside of Old Town and lower down the mountain, Hwai Kiao Waterfall is an easy 10 minute hike up from the entrance. The park is a great place to beat the city heat, but arrive by 8 a.m. opening to beat the crowds. We love visiting waterfalls anywhere that we can. The flowing water is cooling and mesmerizing And the sound is so soothing that we'll just let you enjoy.